Hello, and welcome to CNET. I'm Jeremy Hartley, and today we're profiling candidates in the race for Belfont Borough Council Ward 3. Joining us now is Democrat Party candidate Joanne Tosti Vasey. Hello. Welcome, Joanne. Hello. Thanks for coming by. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to start with uh, an easy question. How's the campaign going? Well, I think it's going very well. I've uh, spent the summer talking to business people, to the community members, doing door knocking, getting ready to do some house parties. Uh, I've got a lot of people who are interested and excited that we actually have a good contested race this fall. So I'm, I'm pleased. That's great. Um, we're getting into budget season here. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your strategy in dealing with budget issues? Well, in terms of the budget, uh, Belfont Borough has 13 different types of budgets. And not having been on council, I don't have an in-depth knowledge of every single line item. But I do know that uh, the fund that most people are interested in would probably be the general fund because that's one where most of the taxes go. Some of the others are done with fees like the sewer lines and the uh, park and rec funds and where you get fees and all. I think what we need to do is look at those budgets, see where, where, what's going on with them, hopefully maintain, maintain them. Sometimes there may be some increases in one budget or another. I did have looked a little bit at one of the, uh, the, how the budgets are, that, are set up. One of the interesting things I found out so far is that the uh, sewer fund uh, doubled from 2014 to 2015 as part of a capital budget. Some of that was paid for by grants, some of that was paid for by sewer fees, and I assume a little bit of that came out of taxes. If we have problems, I don't expect that capital fund that we're going to need, that doubling amount next year and the year after and the year after, because what they were doing was trying to fix some of the sewer lines in the streets. Yes, we're going to have a little bit of that for the next couple of years. But I think looking down the road, there might be some wiggle room to put that back into other parts of the budget where we can um, keep some of the services and maybe improve on some of the services we have. But that will, I won't know until I actually get on council and get some in-depth knowledge about what each of the different line items are. I understand. Um, similar to the State College Borough, Belfond is a landlocked area. Without the ability to spread, what's the best way in expanding the tax base? I am not really sure about how to go about doing that. I do know that we've got some empty areas in town. We also have some empty businesses like out where the old Weiss Market used to be. I think looking at ways to, do, to revamp and improve those business areas would be a good idea. I think working with uh, the county commissioners to to see what we can do to to balance some of the issues, because, for example, uh, CADA services are partial to Belfont are partially paid for through uh, rider fees. Others are it's paid for through uh, monies from the town, and it's also paid for to a very small uh, sense from the commissioner's offices. It is also from the surrounding town, towns. And I think, having attended meetings, there's, there's some concern about a lack of proper balance. And there, so maybe needs some communication between all the governmental entities. So you've got that, you've got the developmental issues in the empty areas. And we also have the waterfront area that if we develop it sensitively and appropriately for Victorian Belfont, talking so that businesses flow from the waterfront area uptown and back. I think it'll help for a more vibrant community. When you get better businesses, they get more money. They have more taxes coming back in, and I think that will be helpful. So it's a synergistic thing, I think. It won't be putting thousands of more houses and apartments, because that's not Belfont. <laughs> I understand. Um, what's your strategy for making the township attractive to potential residents and investors? I, well, I, like I said, I spent the summer talking to businesses and seeing what, what their concerns are. I think one of the co major concerns people have is that we have many empty storefronts. And when, you, when I talk to the business people and when I talk to the um, members of the community, they, 
one of the big issues they talk about is a parking issue. Um, and when people say they can't find a parking space, they leave town. And when you leave town, you don't have the income coming in. But looking at what's happening with it, it looks like, from what I've found out so far, is that there's the particularly bad day is whenever the county government has jury selection. And when you have jury selection, there is no parking downtown. So what I would like to do when I get on council is to sit down with the commissioners and say, you know, what can we do to help resolve this problem? One thought I've had right now is right now we've got that wise parking lot up uh, across from the high school. It's not used and very often. We could probably try to figure out something for the county to do a, a shuttle service for, ju uh, for the people coming in for jury duty because they don't need to be parked in front of the stores, whereas someone who wants to buy a piece of antique furniture or have lunch there might need to do that. Okay. Uh, I was actually going to ask about parking a little further on, and since you've already covered that, I'm going to strike that from my list. <laughs> um, it's been said that uh, Belfont has a lot of water and waterways. How can that be used to the borough's advantage? Well, water is for drinking, water is for recreation, water uh, provides us our general daily sustenance. We already, uh, we have the Big Spring. The Big Spring provides much more water than Belfont itself uses. We provide some of that to uh, some of the industry, local industry. Uh, we also provide it to uh, some of the surrounding townships, and we sell it to Coca-Cola. Um, I think those are all great things. With the waterfront development, uh, like I said, we need to be sensitive about what is happening with the development. Part of that is making sure that the waterfront is accessible when, once that development happens, and that it's a friendly place so people can do it. We also have uh, the paddle park that um, Dave Kurtz developed 50 years ago, uh, which has developed and gotten uh, Olympic level kayakers. We need to make sure we advertise those kinds of things we, and to bring people in. So it's not just one thing, it's many things. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of work going on around the borough. You've mentioned the Waterfront Project, you have Temple Court, you've got Belfont Muse. What are your thoughts on the changing face of the borough? One of the things I think we absolutely need to do is to listen to the community. We need to listen to the business people. What do they feel would help them best? We need to listen to the community members saying that we also need to make sure that we have a historically sensitive thing. In terms of the waterfront development, so far all we know is we've got this wall that is, is mostly built, not completely. That was put together through a community effort where uh, members from BHCA, Beta, uh, council all went out and they chose that stump. We, we had two women who have a background in uh, technical architectural design. They were the ones who picked that stone that actually fits in very well. I understand that initially it was going to be very square, very modern looking things. We need to have that kind of sensitive development. And then once we get the town, gets the depart, that part developed, then what we need to do is when we start looking at developers to come, we need to make sure that they are sensitive to what historic Balfon is so that it fits in. And we need to hold many public hearings to listen to the businesses and to the people so that they are comfortable with it. And by doing that, I think we can have a more vibrant community, Same, similar up, uptown as well. Um. Affordable housing continues to be an issue in many municipalities. Uh, how would you address this in the township? Township? Or, I'm sorry, <laughs> borough. Um, like I, I mentioned before that there are several empty areas in town. I like the idea of mixed use because 
I don't believe that, and I think State College has been doing this as a mixed use sort of thing, is that you mix affordable housing with uh, general housing. That way no one is stigmatized as being those poor folks who are on the other wrong side of the track. I do not want people stigmatized. So I think when, whenever we do uh, development for affordable housing, we make sure that there are uh, some numbers of affordable housing within uh, units or communities, but we don't uh, deny, make it so that those people, uh, individuals, uh, feel like they're stigmatized, because we don't need that in any community anywhere. What issues do you most want to focus on or find most important? I believe that the, we need to plan for and develop for an integrated waterfront district and downtown that is architecturally sensitive and that is appropriate. Secondly, I believe we need to work with the county government to balance the needs of our shared town. Since Belfont is the county seat, we have a lot of community services and community pro and governmental programs. We need to balance that so they meet their needs and our needs and still keep the town vibrant. I also believe we need to work with business, the arts, and cultural community to bring back a vibrant downtown Belfont. <coughs> uh, these, pro these priorities, however, don't come out with some due diligence and uh, oversight, and I think that what we need is elected officials who are concerned about an open and responsive local government, who listen to the public, who listen to the local businesses and for this improved downtown. And I think that that's what we need in order to make things work. And uh, one last question. What should voters know about yourself? I have lived in Belfont since 1985, I think. Basically 30 years. Um, I have always lived in the West Ward. So that is my home. Uh, I am a community organizer. I have Work at currently, I am the, count, the chair of the Center County Advisory Council to the Pennsylvania Human Relations Commission, which is an, the, an organization appointed by the State Human Relations Commission to, quote, be the eyes and ears uh, of the community so that when pe people feel that they have been uh, mistreated, they can give a call. I'm one of two people are on that hotline that you can call and say, here's my problem, and I can steer them to where, what services they need, whether it's a governmental service or uh, tell them how to find a lawyer or a general thing. It's not a counseling service. It, it is basically information and referral, but to make sure that people are treated fairly no matter who they are, what they look like, or, or what they do in their daily lives. Well, that about wraps it up for me. I thank you very much for, for stopping by and answering a couple questions with us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've been talking with Joanne Tosti Vasey, the Democratic Party candidate for Belfont Borough Council Ward 3. All candidates in this race have been invited to participate in a CNET candidate interview. I'm Jeremy Hartley. Election Day is November 3rd, so please get out and vote. <laughs>